हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट ट्वेल्व एवोल्यूशन ऑफ लोकल गवर्नेंस बिफोर सेवेंटी थर्ड एंड सेवेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर टॉपिक हिस्टोरिकल ओवरव्यू द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट विद अ व्यू टू for preserve and stabilize a political control took various measures and recognized villages panchayats a special commission was appointed in 1909 on local self government which suggested the need for revitalizing the villages panchayats for handling local affairs the decentralization commission which reported in 1909 made some far reaching suggestions to remove some of the defects in the functioning of local boards in 1915 a government resolution endorsed the commission proposals but again the provincial governments took no step in the matter following the montague declaration of 1917 regarding the introduction of responsible government in gradual beginning with the local bodies a resolution was issued by the government of india in 1918 and under the scheme of provincial diarchy by 1919 ruler self government was put under the charge of the indian ministries some progress was made besides municipal and local board acts laws were passed in almost all the provinces to introduce panchayats in villages subsequently a number of acts w- were passed like the bengal village self government act of 1919 madras bombay and united provinces village panchayats acts of 1920 bihar and orissa village administration act assam ruler self government act of 1926 Punjab Village Panchayats Act of 1935 etc to look after the village affairs and certain matters relating to their development under the government of india act 1935 provincial autonomy started functioning in the provinces from april 1937 Congress governments took office in eight of the eleven provinces. Considerable progress in the direction of panchayati raj was made during the period of the Congress rule. According to the January 1948 plan of Gandhi ji, each village panchayat would constitute a working party with an elected leader. about the village panchayat came the hierarchy of the indirectly elected bodies talukas and district panchayats each of which comprised the sarpanchas of the next lower panchayats members from the district and municipal panchayats would make up the provincial panchayats the national panchayats would be responsible for defense currency customs running of key industries of national importance and coordination of provincial economic development plans but the panchayats formed under these acts were not democratic bodies as the government mostly nominated their members the powers given to them were merger and their financial resources were also limited commenting on the status of panchayats during the british period 
Maddox observed the British administration with its Roman sense of justice replacing the traditional powers of panchayats in the more serious judicial cases. Its system of tax gathering and of administration made such a violent impact that the corporate life of villages was weakened and in most cases died. The end of the Second World War brought in its wake the downfall of colonialism and the subject countries were granted independence by the rulers countries one after another. Invariably these countries were underdeveloped and backward because science and technology were not applied to the welfare of the masses of these countries. The gap between rich and poor countries begins widening instead of narrowing down because in the newly emerged nations there was human power but not wealth. This enormous disparity among the people of the world is a problem not only for the poor nations but also for the rich parts of the world. Prosperity like peace is indivisible. The end of the war also brought on the world stage two superpowers having different approaches for the economic progress and welfare of their masses. These approaches are poles apart from each other. The first is the democratic approach and the second is the revolutionary approach. Thus a great burden fell on the soldiers of our leaders and they were called upon to share the responsibilities which were to them a dream. Under such circumstances history came to their rescue and they cleared their policy in clear terms, planning democratic with a view to get the benefits of both the approaches democratic and revolutionary. In every committee, conferences and meeting, be it national, international or regional, there was only one topic under discussion and it is how to achieve speedy development in underdeveloped and undeveloped countries. A great number of programs are assisted by the United Nations its specialized agencies, intergovernmental organizations, regional commissions, bilateral agreements and many semi-public and private agencies with a view to improving the economic conditions of the people in different parts of the world. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with a self-learning podcast.